in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. Welcome to St. Paul's Knightsbridge, a parish church in London tucked just behind the back wall of Buckingham Palace and therefore very close to the place where over the past week hundreds of thousands of people of all faiths and of none have gathered to express their condolences, to lay flowers, and simply to be together. Here, as in many parish churches across the land, we have opened a book of condolence, and we've been astonished by the huge number of people who perhaps don't normally go to church, but who have instinctively felt the need to come into God's presence this week, to be still and to pray. At such a time as this, when our world shifts, when we lose those we love and respect, and when we feel slightly adrift and uncertain in life, we know what the psalmist knew, that God, eternal and unchanging, is our refuge and our strength. I'm joined today by parishioners here, Rachel, Karina, and Robert, who on this eve of the Queen's funeral will help us to reflect on what faith has to say to us about loss and about the consolation of God. Let us pray. Lord, we come into your presence to remember your servant Elizabeth and to seek your comfort, for we know that nothing can separate us from your love and that you support us in our sorrow. We are sure that the souls of the righteous are with you and that nothing can harm them. Though they have died, they are at peace. Give us your strength to rejoice that you have taken our queen to be with you where she will be no more in need. And may we with her find life and peace and perfect joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Earlier this week, as we as a nation sat glued to our screens, waiting for the next scene in what has been a rich pageant of events to mark our Queen's death and the accession of our King. One presenter on the BBC asked an eminent professor of modern history from one of our ancient universities, how will history remember her? Our remembering this week has been helped, prompted by an avalanche of programmes on television and radio, charting events over the Queen's 96 full years of life. Some of them have helped us to remember things about her reign, what she did, where and when. But many of these programs, if you're anything like me, have helped us to remember things about ourselves too, where we were and who we were with at key moments over the course of her lifetime. For me, Jubilee celebrations in far-off Scotland, times of national crisis, significant moments in world affairs through which we have all lived. The professor said, well, it's really too soon to know how history will remember her. Ask me again in a hundred years. 
And of course, that's right. Remembering and forming a memory or an idea of what will survive us and outlive us in the minds of others is a curious process. What will the Queen's legacy be? But then what will your legacy be, or mine, when we are gone? What will they say of us, our children and our grandchildren? How will those who come after us remember us? I used to work in an ancient royal chapel which was filled with memorials. Tourists used to love walking around reading what was written on them. One of my colleagues there said, you know, when my time comes, I'm just going to have a large question mark engraved on the stone and the word who, because that's what people say. Who? And of course they do. Our memories are very human things, very partial, and we are forgetful no matter how much we say we intend to remember. Sometimes, like our remarkable queen, we see the account of lives written and rewritten by historians who will remember her differently and rewrite versions of who she was because the way we remember is very human and says as much about us as it does about the person we're remembering. But perhaps some of us lesser mortals fear that we may not be remembered at all. What if we are forgotten? And I sometimes wonder whether deep down it is this fear of being forgotten that makes us so very fearful of death. It's not for many of us the thought of dying. It is rather the fear of being lost, being forgotten, being out of mind, no longer of any significance. At the heart of our Christian faith, of course, is a very different proposition. And it is this, that because we are created in love by a loving God, and because the heart and mind of God is not limited by our human frailty, we will not be forgotten eternally, nor wrongly remembered. Rather, through Jesus Christ, the God who knows us completely as we are, and who views us, thank God, with astonishing love and forgiveness, knows and loves us eternally. Nothing, not even death, can change that or separate us from the love of God. That's what St. Paul said, you remember. In St. John's Gospel, as we've just heard, Jesus himself reassures his disciples and us that what God has given to him, he will not lose eternally, but will rather raise it up on the last day. That claim is mysterious. We do not know precisely what it means any more than we can know precisely what heaven will be like when we are gone, though we can speculate, and my goodness, we do. But the one thing we do know, if our fear of being ignored and forgotten is something that makes us sometimes fretful and anxious. Our faith assures us that nothing, not even death, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Our late queen knew this deep in her heart. It gave her not only hope for the future, but grace and strength even while she was alive to live fully, not out of any anxious sense of what other people thought about her, but sustained and empowered by a sense that she was fully loved by God, then and to all eternity. That faith which was hers is ours too, and gives us hope for the future, but also strength now to cast off our fears, to be about the work of God and God's kingdom.
As we mourn the death of Elizabeth, our Queen, let us give thanks to God in faith and trust. For the gift of Christ Jesus and for all whose devotion to him has sustained the life of our church and nation. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and all the royal family, for the ministers of the Crown and all who bear the privilege and burden of government. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For all people touched by Queen Elizabeth's devotion to public service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For our sovereign Lord King Charles and for those who will support him in the coming months and years. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For our own lives, giving thanks for all those who have gone before and asking that we might live in confidence and hope. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Your Son, by dying for us, conquered death and, by rising again, restored us to eternal life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet our Redeemer and, after life on earth, be reunited with all our brothers and sisters in that place where every tear is wiped away and all things are made new. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Almighty God, to whom we come for refuge. Deliver us in your goodness and righteousness. Incline your ear to us and make haste to help us, so that even though the earth be moved, even amidst loss and darkness, we may know that we are deeply loved and may live as those with confidence and hope through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, unto him who is able to keep us from falling and lift us from the dark valley of despair to the bright mountain of hope, from the midnight of desperation to the daybreak of joy, to him be power and authority forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.